welcome back to redirecting this video is going to be the first in the arresting your thoughts mini series now I want to cover moods in this particular video because a good or bad mood can determine how the rest of your day goes and flows one of the worst things to have to deal with is someone else's bad mood <laughs> okay whether you're going to work or you're at home, you're at school or whatever, and someone has a bad mood, it doesn't just affect that person. It affects all of those around them. And I want to help you. Hopefully this uh, series will help you to understand what it means to arrest your thoughts. Um, the scripture calls it bring your thoughts into captivity, bringing your thoughts into captivity. That means, okay, something is in my mind. I don't want it there, so I'm going to have to arrest it. I got to bring it into captivity and deal with it. Okay, once you bring it into captivity, you have to deal with it. Okay, and in dealing with it, you have to expel it from your mind. Okay, so hopefully this series will help you to understand what it means to arrest your thoughts better. Now, in dealing with moods, um, like I said, um, a bad mood or a good mood can determine how the rest of your day flows. Now let's start off with a bad mood. If you wake up in a bad mood, there are a number of different reasons why this happens. Either you had a bad dream um, or you went to bed and you didn't clear the mood from the previous day. Um, someone said something to you that just kind of entered into your mind and instead of, instead of expelling it, you decided to ponder or meditate on it. And so you start your day off in a bad mood and instead of dealing with that mood you decide that you're going to carry it with you it's like a burden you just throw it over your shoulder now we're talking about thoughts though right you throw that bad mood over your shoulder and you carry it around the rest of the day and so those that you encounter they have to experience that mood as well um, your mood usually has or comes with a chip that you have on your shoulder um, it's a facial expression, okay? Uh, there's a song by Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, where they say it is funny how the way you feel shows on your face. And no matter how you try to hide, it states your case, right? Talking about that face, that look that you have. And others, when they see your face, they see your mood, okay? And so I want to help you to understand um, again, arresting those thoughts because, believe it or not, your attitude or your mood can also determine your health. We don't, we don't make a connection with all of that stuff because we've been raised a particular way. We, uh, we raised around, we're, we've been raised around somebody who's always had a bad, mean, nasty attitude, so we just think it's normal. Or we say, uh, she, she don't play. Okay, yeah, she might not play, but you don't have to be a mean um, person either, right? You don't have to be the kind of person to where others, when they come around you, they're, they're like, okay, what's her mood today? What's, what's going on with her today? What is she upset about today? You know, have you ever been around a person who's always upset about something, always in a bad mood, even when you try to, uh, break the ice with that person, you try to make them laugh. They just refuse to, that, that kind of thing can kind of rub off on others. And so you don't typically like to be, as a matter of fact, you will be the, the kind of person that um, others will avoid if you're like that. They won't desire to be in your presence. And nine times out of 10, if you're like that, you don't want people around you anyway, because you like to um, stew in that mood that you're in, okay? Now, so let's talk about arresting thoughts. If you're not the kind of person who wants to be in a bad mood, who doesn't want to carry it around, let's talk about how to arrest it. Okay, let's say that your bad mood was the result of a dream that you had. Okay, I know for me, I've had dreams before that have upset me. And, and I'm like, and believe it or not, the person that you dream about, um, it was just a dream. They did something that upset you and you wake up and you're upset at that person. Now, that's something to me that's simple. If you can just wrap your brain around the fact that it was just a dream, it never happened. It was 
an alternate reality. So I don't need to carry this around. I don't even need to ponder on it because it was just a dream. If you can expel it that quickly, just by analyzing and understanding that it was just a dream, then you won't allow yourself to carry it around uh, wondering. You see, a lot of times a person will have a dream and then they will wonder about the dream. They'll be like, man, I can't believe he or she did that to me. But you have to remember, it was just a dream. They didn't do anything to you, okay? So that one was simple. <clears throat> but what if it's something that happened the previous day? Let's say something happened at work and you wake up in a bad mood because you're going to go to work again and face the person that caused the bad mood to begin with. Now, nine times out of 10, that person that caused your bad mood, they went home and they slept well, slept like a baby. And they got up this morning and they didn't even think about what they did to spoil your mood. As a matter of fact, on the ride into work, they are, they're not even thinking about what they're going to say when they see you because it came out of their mouth, affected you, and they've moved on because they are the ones who perpetrated something against you, but you allowed it to get to you to the point where you tossed and turned all night, okay? You could barely sleep, and then you woke up the next morning in a bad mood because you're thinking about going to confront that person or face that person again. The best thing that you can do in a situation like that is first of all, expel it out of your mind, okay? When you go to work, you should display happiness and joy because a lot of times when people do things to hurt you or offend you or get on your nerves, they are empowered even more when they see how badly it disturbed you or how, how much it bothered you. For them, it's like mission accomplished. I accomplished my goal. I wanted to upset this person. I wanted to get in there and stir something up in their mind. I wanted to frustrate their grace or their peace, right? And it's mission accomplished to them. And so we should not allow people outside of us or even dreams to determine our moods. Now, sometimes moods can come as a result of something that you're going through in your life. Okay. Let's say you're having financial, financial difficulties, right? And you wake up every day thinking about how you're going to solve this situation, right? Now you're thinking about it is only worrying. Okay. You're worrying. You're not thinking about how in terms of, okay, I can do this or I can do that. You're just worried about it. That's the thinking that you're doing. You're pondering. So you're not arresting the thought. You're not saying, okay, well, me worrying about this is not going to solve it. But instead you allow yourself to sit there and meditate on the fact that you have the problem to begin with. And when you meditate on the problem or the situation, without trying to meditate on solutions, you're just like, what am I going to do? What are we going to do? I don't have nobody I can turn to. Woe is me. When you, when you meditate on something in that way, you are actually inviting a bad or negative mood into your mind because you are not arresting the thought. You're not saying, okay, um, I'm going to make it through this. Um, I'm going to come up, let me just write down five or four or five different ways that I can um, get the money. Um, maybe I can do this or I can do that. Or maybe I can call this person to see if they have any ideas. Instead of adding positive energy into that situation, you're adding negative energy into that situation. And that worry brings you to a bad mood. It's not solving anything. Nothing is going to be fixed because you're sitting there pondering on the situation. Nothing, not one thing. But what you are doing is making the situation worse because you are now developing a mood, a bad mood, okay? A mood of worry. And you have created an atmosphere in your brain that is 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 dysfunctional because you're not going to solve anything with the worrying about a situation. Now, 
I know this can be easier said than done for some. But like I said in a previous video, there are situations where uh, some people are, um, I'll just take the woman who was born with no legs and no arms. Now, a lot of people would say that um, it's literally impossible for her to do good in life, for her to make any type of progress. But she, against all odds, proved a lot of people wrong. You see, the young man that was born blind, but he was able to navigate very smoothly and flawlessly just from hearing sounds. A lot of people would not be as productive as he was with eyesight and him being blind. This is because he did not allow a thought to settle in his mind and cause him to be non-productive. He arrested any thoughts of negativity that would prevent him from forging ahead. Now you have able-bodied people who have nothing but excuses. While others are making progress, they are making excuses because they are not bringing their thoughts into captivity or arresting their thoughts. Never allow yourself to settle on a bad mood because that bad news that bad mood will get you nowhere now i'm going to talk about a good mood okay i don't have to really talk about arresting a good mood because you don't need to bring that into captivity a good mood is a good mood and it's good for you but what i want to say about a good mood is if you are going through a situation but you were refuse to be in a bad mood a form of arresting that thought is to say, look, I'm going to be in a good mood today. I'm going to be happy regardless to what happens today. Especially if you understand that this is the day that you who have made, we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to rejoice and be glad. Now, I do understand that there are things that can happen in a day, a tragedy, uh, something that is very, very difficult to deal with. Um, I know that you can't just um, put some things aside, but you can determine how it's going to affect your mind and your thoughts and your body because ultimately your health can rest in your mind and rest in your body, okay? Now, a good thought can definitely cancel out a bad thought in many different scenarios, okay? You wake up with a, with a bad dream, you had a bad dream, bad night, Okay, um, that dream that you had caused you to feel some kind of way. But when you wake up and you first determine that you're feeling some kind of way because of a dream, you shake yourself loose. And you say, well, you know what? It was just a dream. And you quickly move on from there. The situation at work, if you had a situation the day before, if you want to experience a better day and have a better mood, you determine right then and there before you walk out the door, before you even put the key in the ignition, before you even step into the workplace, that I'm not going to let this person get to me today. They're going to get to their own selves because I'm going to ignore them. I'm going to behave this way or that way, but I'm not going to do what they expect me to do. They expect me to um, be rude, nasty, frown, have a bad mood on my face. They expect all of that, but I'm not going to give them what they want. You heap hot coals on a person's head when you don't give them what they want. Okay. When you don't satisfy their mood. Okay. So basically if you make the determination within yourself in any situation, it doesn't just have to be a bad dream or a coworker or something like it. it can be a husband or wife or even children. If you make the determination within your own self that I'm not going to let this person that's outside of me interrupt my flow. I'm not going to let them interrupt my flow. If you make that determination and you stick to it, they would begin to look at you and wonder what is going on with him or her. Now, it is easier said than done, but it takes practice and it can be done. But you need to do this for you because bad moods can affect a lot of things in your life. They can affect your relationships or your ability to even form relationships. 
I've heard a lot of men say that they don't approach a certain woman because she has a look on her face that makes her appear to be unapproachable. I think I'm going to save that for another part of this series. Are you un unapproachable because you've allowed um, a certain thought to settle into your mind and it's showing up all on your face? And so that makes it to where people don't want to deal with you. Okay. Um, that is going to be it for this particular segment. Um, I'm not sure which um, aspect I'll cover next. Um, I may get into the relationship aspect next, or I may get into depression. Um, I'm not sure at this point. I'm going to try to go as I am led to go, but I definitely want this series um, to be something that will be a baraka to those who hear because uh, we definitely want to understand uh, the importance of having good, clean, pure thoughts because the enemy he definitely wants to keep you in a state of mind to where you are pretty much um non-productive you're unusable you're just a person that is who's basically influenced by any thought that comes your way you're tossed to and fro because you can't be settled on anything you don't want to be a person that becomes unstable because you are unable to arrest your thoughts. With that family, I will say shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.